Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Rockin' here. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a 3D bullet effect for your Valorant montages, just like you would have seen in the intro of this video. For this effect, all you're going to need is any editing software, whether it's After Effects, Premiere Pro, Sony Vegas, Filmora, DaVinci Resolve, anything will work, so long as the timeline supports layering videos. And you're also going to need a free piece of software called Blender, which will be where we get the 3D aspect of this effect from. You can use an After Effects plugin called Element 3D, however that is paid, so I'm not going to Show you how to do that. To create this effect using the method I show in this video, it's completely free, and I put all the download links to everything that I use in this video down in the description. Just before we get started, I've noticed a lot of you watch my videos but you're not actually subscribed. So if that is you and you're not subscribed, scroll down the page, hit the subscribe button, leave a like while you're down there, as well as leave a comment with suggestions for any other videos you'd like to see on the channel, as well as check out all my other social media links will be down in the description. And if you're new here, I urge you to check out my channel. I have loads of other editing tutorials for making montages and edits. And without any further ado, let's get into the video. So you're gonna want to start by opening up your editing software of choice. For this video I'm going to be using Adobe After Effects however you can use literally any editing software under the sun as long as it supports layering videos in the timeline. And another thing you're going to need is three clips of your kill. I'm going to be showing it in Valorant, you don't have to use Valorant, you could use any game for this. Just in my case that's what I'll be using. You're going to want three clips, so the first clip being where you actually get the kill itself. Typically you're going to want to do this with some form of sniper rifle, so in my clip I've used an operator in Valorant. And the second clip you're going to want to be a cinematic that will show the path the bullet takes. You don't have to include a third clip, but in my case I did, and that just shows the character dying upon being shot, but that's not necessarily necessary to make this effect look good and can be quite a lot of effort to record in a custom game. In Valorant for example there's no way to watch games back after they've played out whereas in CSGO for example you could capture all three of those clips on your own. Whereas for Valorant I did need the help of two other people to record these clips in a custom game so shout out to Gex and Howl I'll leave the links to their channels in the description make sure you go check them out and show them some love. And that's really all there is to it to start with so I'm going to start by importing my three clips. So I have my bullet path, the death cinematic and the kill so I'm going to drag all of those into my editing software. Again you can use whatever software you like you'll just have to follow essentially what I do and then translate that into whichever software you're using. All the project files from this video, so both the After Effects and the Blender one, are going to be available on my Patreon, so make sure you click the link in the description and go check that out. There you'll be able to download both of them, so you don't even need to follow the tutorial necessarily, you can just download exactly what I did and then adapt it to your use case. So to start with, we're going to go for the kill clip, so I'm going to drag that onto my timeline and just want to cut it down to the point where you actually get the kill, so I know mine's quite near the end here, so I'm going to cut it to just before I peek around the wall. So in After Effects, I'm going to use control open square bracket to cut the beginning of this clip and then press square bracket to bring it to the beginning of my timeline. So as you can see this is the clip we're working with. And if you're using a scoped weapon like this, what you're going to want to do is go to the point where you get the kill and it snaps straight out of the scope. So in After Effects, I'm going to press Control shift d to split the layer and then just discard this part. So the clip that I have is just this. I'm actually going to disable the audio because that's going to get a bit annoying. Now for your second clip, you're going to want to be the bullet path, which will look something like this. As you can see, it's just a cinematic where I flew from the place where I took the shot to where the enemy was standing. And again, you're going to want to cut this down to roughly match where you take the shot from. So I'm just going to cut it here. We can always trim it down later. And I'm going to go to the end where I want the bullet to hit. And I think that's going to be about here before I start clipping into his hand. So we'll cut it there like that. And then we'll bring the clip to match up with our other clip. So currently what we're working with looks like this. Now for me, I think this clip is way too slow, so I'm actually gonna, gonna right click on it, hit time, time stretch, and I'm gonna make it 35% the length of the original clip. Again, you should be able to do this in any editing software, just change the speed to, you know, two, three, four times the speed if your clip was this slow. Basically just make the length of the clip to your preference. So now it looks like this. And I think that's, I think that's a, a pretty good speed. I'm actually going to cut the beginning of this clip off so that the transition is a bit cleaner between where the, where the bullet shot and then into the actual clip itself. Just think that matches up a bit better because it was uh, quite zoomed in. Now what you're going to want to do is add in the death cinematic. So I'm going to drag that in. And again, I know mine's right at the end of the clip. And you're going to bring it to the point where, in my case, the bullet trail comes on screen. So I'm going to go back. It just got shot there. And I'm going to cut it here. Bring this to match up with my other clip. You see that's where he gets shot. And then when the animation goes away. I'll cut it there just like that. So this is what my whole clip looks like now. And 
Okay, so essentially all we've done is cut the three clips together. So the kill followed by the bullet path, followed by the death cinematic to show that they've been killed. Now comes the 3D part. So for that, we're gonna need a, a reference video. You don't necessarily need this, but I find it easier. So I'm gonna quickly just select the portion where our bullets flying through the air. So on the keyboard, I'm gonna select B to set the beginning of my in point. And at the end of it, I'm gonna press N to select my out point. Again, in any software, you should be able to do this. You just essentially wanna render this portion out as a quick video. So for me, I'm just gonna file, export, add it to the media encoder queue. And essentially, as you can see over here, we've got just the parts that we marked in and out. So we just want this clip to render. It doesn't have to be anything high quality. So I'm gonna keep it at the base resolution, 60 FPS is just what I used. Again, you could use whatever your, your composition is set to. 10 megabits per second, nothing fancy. I'll just render it out. I'm just gonna render it out like this. And now if I go into my documents and play this video, you'll see it's just the clip of where the bullet flies. Now what we're going to do is head to the link in the description and download Blender. If you haven't downloaded it already, just hit this download button here, pick your operating system and download it. And then when you launch it, it should open on a screen just like this. Now the next thing you're gonna need is a 3D bullet model. So I've put a link to this model down in the description from TurboSquid, it's completely free. You just gonna hit the download button down here and sign in. And then it will take you to a page that looks like this. And you're gonna want to download the bullet high.blend and the bullet high textures.zip and put them into a folder. Now back into Blender, I'm just gonna click off screen, press A on my keyboard to select everything and then press delete to get rid of it. Then I'm gonna come up to file, append, navigate to where I saved that bullet blend file, double click it, go into object and then select bullet high and append. Now if you press the uh, full stop or delete key on your numpad, you'll zoom in and you should see that we have these two bullets here. To move around in Blender, you're gonna wanna hold down the middle mouse button and move your mouse around and you can scroll in and out to zoom in and out. And this is where we're gonna start to make the uh, the 3D bullet effect. This bullet on the right we don't need, so I'm just gonna select it and press delete. And for this one over here, we don't need the shell, so I'm gonna select it, press tab on my keyboard to go into edit mode, click the X-ray button up here, and then I'm gonna select just the bottom half and press delete and delete the faces. Then I'm gonna come out of edit mode by pressing tab again right click on our bullet set origin origin to geometry right click again snap selection to cursor and that's going to move it to the middle of our world then going to press the full stop or delete key on our keyboard again to focus on it now what you're going to do is head over to the render mode just up here to make sure our textures are set up properly if they're not then we'll need to fix them so as you can see they're not currently as the bullet is pink in the render settings make sure you're on eevee you can use cycles if you want but for this video we're just going to use eevee and then i'm going to go up to the shading tab and in our node editor down here you'll see these four nodes here these are our texture files to fix the textures you're going to want to just click this little button here the directory button it'll open up an explorer like this and then you're going to want to find those bullet textures that we downloaded from the website as well. So you can see the node that I'm selected on is bulletnormals.png. So I'm gonna select bulletnormals.png and then hit open image. A quicker way to do all four of these at once is if you come up to file, external data, and then find missing files. Navigate to where the textures are and then hit find missing files. It should automatically fix them all. If not, just repeat the step that we did for the normals. And here you can see our bullet now has a texture. If you can't see anything, make sure you're in the materials or the render view, just like that. And then we're gonna also wanna set up some lighting for our bullet. I will be making a separate blender the lighting tutorial in the future but for this video just to keep it simple as I'm sure a lot of people following this will not be familiar with the software we're just going to do some simple lighting so in the shading view we're going to change the node editor from object view to world view zoom in delete the background press shift a search for environment texture drag the color to the surface and then down in the description, I'm gonna leave a link to this website called HDRI Haven, where you can download HDRI textures. And essentially what they are, is just a 360 image of an environment that can give us some basic lighting. So you're gonna to wanna to download one of those. Then I'm gonna click open, navigate to where we saved our HDRI. I'll leave a link to the exact one that I used in the description. And I believe this is the 2K version. And then you're just gonna hit open image. And now if we change to rendered view, you'll see that there's this 360 degree image of like a bench outside and essentially this is just going to give us some quick and easy lighting for our bullet so now i'm going to navigate back to the layout tab and over in our render settings come down to film and click transparent and that will hide the background and for the moment we're just going to go back into material view now what you're going to want to do is import a camera so this is going to set the framing of where we're going to essentially like record our bullet from so we're going to press shift a click on camera come over to the object properties click and drag on the rotation values type in zero and then change our X rotation back to 90. And if we zoom out, you'll see we have this camera facing this way. Now we're gonna to wanna to select our bullet and scale it up by pressing S on our keyboard and then just drag your mouse. And I think we'll do what, a size, something, something like that. And then press R to rotate, press X 
to rotate via the X axis and then type in minus 90 on the keyboard. Otherwise you can adjust it over here in the object properties. And now we're gonna to want to bring our bullet to be in front of our camera. So I'm gonna press G to move the bullet, Y to move it on the Y axis, and then just position it in front of our camera. Now if we click this button up here or zero on our numpad, you'll move into the camera view and you can see there is our bullet. And essentially what we're gonna do is animating it moving through our camera. Before we do that, we need to import our reference videos. So you can get an idea of what it's gonna look like when we render it out. So make sure you have the camera selected up here, make sure the camera selected, go into the camera settings, then background images, make sure you tick it, add an image, change it to movie clip, open, and then find the base video that we rendered out earlier. So if I hit open clip, you'll now see in the background, if I drag along on the timeline here, we've got our clip from before. So you're gonna to wanna to go th scroll through the timeline just by dragging the playhead down here to the point where it goes pink and then we'll know we're at our last frame. So I'm gonna go back one, so 103 and set. Over here we have our start at one and our end at 250. I'm gonna set our end to 103 and that way our render will end when our video ends. Another thing you can do is set the camera's focal length to match that of the camera in game. Typically you'll find it's around 90. So I'm gonna change the lens unit to field of view and then you can type 90 in here. And that'll just change the perspective of how the bullet appears on and off screen. Personally, I think I'm just gonna leave it as is because uh, I don't think it necessarily looks bad. But if you want it to be a bit more realistic, then yeah, think about changing the camera's focal length. And now what you're gonna wanna do is navigate to the final frame, so frame 103, where you get the kill. And we're gonna wanna position our bullet exactly where you want it. So if we come out of the camera view just, just by pressing and holding the middle mouse button and then we zoom out you can see you can see if I change this up here to another 3D viewport and go into the camera essentially how where we move our bullet is where it's going to appear on the camera so you can see up here is the perspective of the camera as we move it closer obviously it's going to get bigger and you're essentially recording from the back point of this camera here so what I'm going to do is move it forwards to about about there is where I want it to finish and I'm going to press I on my keyboard make sure that we're on our last keyframe so in my case it's 103 press I on my keyboard Keyboard, and then tick location rotation and scale and then I'm going to go all the way back to the first keyframe so keyframe number one where we start recording from and I'm going to move the bullet back to about here and I'm also going to move it down so it appears like it comes from underneath the camera. I press I on my keyboard again and then location rotation and scale and now you'll see down here we have these two yellow diamonds and essentially between these two points the bullet is going to move from the position we set at the beginning to the position we set at the end. And I actually wanna move that bullet back a little bit there. So I'm gonna move it to, yeah, about there. And location, rotation and scale again to set that. So you'll see the bullet moves just like this from underneath and shoots essentially whoever we're, we're trying to shoot in the video. Something else you can do is on the last frame, you can have the bullet rotate by a mass amount, depending on the lighting and the texture of the bullet, you may or may not be able to see this, but for me, I'm gonna press R, Y, I'm gonna type 720. So that's gonna give us three rotations of the bullet. Press I and then location, rotation and scale again. And you can sort of see it up here. If I go into the camera view here and I zoom in, you see how the texture on the bullet is rotating? I find that that's a little bit more accurate to how a bullet uh, in real life would be. And then another thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is select both of these keyframes, right click them, go to interpolation mode and set this to linear because otherwise it'll be slow to start with, slow at the end and faster in the middle. And we want it to be a constant speed so we can edit it later if we want to. So if I play the video through, it comes on the screen, you can see it spinning, heading towards the person we're trying to kill and bang they're dead and essentially that's all there is to it in the blender part you can obviously do a lot more and make the effect more convincing but i'm trying to make it as basic as possible and if you know how to use blender already then i'm sure you can mess around and customize this until your heart's content but hopefully if you're new to blender you have been able to follow what i just did and can produce this same outcome all the project files from this video so both the after effects and the blender one are going to be available on my patreon so make sure you click the link in the description and go check that out there you'll be able to download both of them so you don't even need to follow the tutorial necessarily you can just download exactly what i did and then adapt it to your use case and now we're going to want to render it out so i'm going to select my camera and i'm going to disable this background image because we don't want that anymore if i go to rendered view we should see the background is transparent which is what we want now i'm going to go back to the render settings by clicking this camera up here we're in EV is what we want. Some settings you may want to enable is ambient occlusion and bloom. If I scroll through, you should see the bloom essentially adds this little glow here. If you turn that off, it just makes it look a little bit nicer in my opinion. Of course, you can turn it off if you don't want it. I wouldn't mess with depth of field. You can blur it in, in the editing if you want to. Screen space reflections, you can also have one if you want. It'll just make the bullet look a little bit more realistic. And for this bullet video, 64 samples is going to be plenty. You could lower this if you want to or increase it depending on how good your PC is. Essentially, the higher the number, the better the quality is going to be. 
uh, but it will take longer to render. And that's basically all we need to change in here. Just make sure that under film you have transparent on, otherwise you'll be shooting at, well, in my case, a tree. So make sure you have transparent ticked. There goes the output properties. Set your resolution to match that of your clip. So in After Effects, my composition in composition settings is 2560 by 1440. So I'm going to set my render to be 2560 by 1440, just like that. Frame rate of 60 FPS, which is going to match my, my clip in here. Realistically, that doesn't matter because we're going to be rendering out as a PNG sequence. But if you wanted to render it out in any, any other format for any other reason, then you're going to want to make sure that this matches your clip's frame rate. And then down here by the output, I'm going to make sure that it's set to PNG. Color depth of 8 is fine. RGBA. We want to make sure we have RGBA selected. If we just have RGB, this background will be black. We want it to be transparent. A stands for alpha, which is the alpha channel, uh, which allows us to have transparency in our image. Compression, I'm just going to reduce. You can increase it if you want, but I don't want any because it's going to be faster to edit. And then I'm going to click this directory here and choose where I want to save it. So in my tutorial directory I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it bullet render go into that folder and hit accept and now we're pretty much ready to render so to speed it up a little bit I'm going to come out of the rendered view here and then go to render and render animation and now you'll see the video is being rendered out in your documents you'll see this hopefully which is a bunch of images which is the PNG sequence of the bullet flying through the air which is just what we wanted and then when we import this into our editing software we'll convert it back into a video. As you can see mine's mine's done rendering already I have all 103 frames in here that I set in Blender before. Uh, yours may take a little bit longer depending on the settings you use and the speed of your PC but for me that was pretty quick. And now I'm just going to save this Blender file just in case you want to edit something later. So I'm just going to name this tutorial and save and close out of Blender. Then I'm going to copy the path of where we where we rendered our bullet PNGs out to back into our editing software import file gonna go to our bullet render select the first image make sure PNG sequence is ticked and then import you may have to google how to do that in your specific editing software but in after effects it's pretty straightforward a lot of software will have this capability though now in my project bin you can see that after effects has automatically set our png sequence to 30 fps so we're going to want to edit this and make sure that it matches the rest of our clips which are all at 60 so i'm going to right click on it interpret footage main change the assume this frame rate to 60 and now what i'm going to do is drag and drop this on top of our clip so you can put it above of our bullet path clip and I'm going to just expand our work area to include our whole clip just like that. I'm going to drag our bullet PNG sequence to be on top of our to be on top of our bullet path and you'll see now if we skip through we've got the bullet flying through the air towards the person we want to kill and then it cuts to them being shot. So if I play this through in full speed right now That is essentially all there is to it. Now what you can do is add effects like on our bullet path effect, uh, on our bullet path clip, if I come over to effects and presets and I add some uh, radial blur, for example, uh, set this to zoom uh, and we'll increase the amount to say 20. You'll see now as the bullet is flying through the air, it looks like it's got a bit more speed. You could definitely do things like that. Maybe add some chromatic aberration as well. Something I would recommend is adding a shake between when the when the gun fires and the bullet flying through the air just makes it seem a little bit more seamless the transition here but essentially customize it until your heart's content uh, i would recommend adding some sort of blur or aberration or something like that as well as some sound effects but for the sake of the tutorial i've pretty much shown you everything you need to know like i said if you do want to download this exact project file that's the clips the after effects project as well as the blender project then please check out my patreon with the link in the description and you'll be able to download it there that way you don't have to really do anything yourself but other than that that is pretty much all there is to this effect check out my channel for other tutorials similar to this one follow me on all my other social media make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you never miss an upload but other than that thanks for watching the video happy editing and i'll catch you in the next one